Good afternoon and welcome to Tech Bytes. I'm Preston Parton and I am the Technology Director for Southwest REC. This is the very last Tech Bytes that we will have for this school year. So it's kind of bittersweet that we are joining together for our last one. Um, this is going to be just a light version today. We are going to just look at some of my favorite tech sites that I enjoy. And I have so many, it was hard to narrow down some that would fit into our one hour segment. But I have found some, so I hope that you enjoy what I have found for you. So let's go ahead and get started with what I want to share with you. So let's see here. All right. So let's see here. Um, I am going to take you through a few things. First, I'm going to share with you classroom screen. I'm going to share with you something that was just introduced to me called Flippity. This seems to be something for Google um, platforms. And so if you are a Google environment at your school, this is going to be something you're going to love. QR Monkey, uh, that is going to be QR code generator, and it's phenomenal. You're going to love that one as well. If you are one that loves to change up your PowerPoint, then there's a bunch of PowerPoint templates that I'm going to share with you. And then Jeopardy Labs, I always loved when I was in the classroom to make study guides a lot of fun. And so this gets your whole class involved with a Jeopardy-like game. And you can introduce new topics and find out what they already know. Or you can do it as a study guide as you're preparing for um, any type of a unit assessment, things like that. And then I have some that I've just kind of lumped together into a miscellaneous category. So the first one, again, is going to be classroom screen, and I already have this um, posted online, and so you can have access to this PowerPoint, and all of these links are available for you. And then we're going to go into flippity.net, and again, this is going to be tons of activities and games, things that you can access through um, your Google area. Oops. Uh, QR code monkey. Again, these are going to be QR codes, and they're going to um, make it a little bit more fun by adding some pictures and color. It's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to love this one. And let's see. Then you have lots of different versions of uh, PowerPoint slides, and this is also going to work for Google, so your slides or your PowerPoint templates. Then Jeopardy Labs. Um, I also have my wiki on here because I do have some templates there as well that you can use. And then under miscellaneous, uh, we're always as teachers trying to find images and we don't want to have any copyright issues. So there are uh, some sites that I'm going to share with you that you can go for images that are uh, protected, that you are allowed to use without any uh, danger of violating anything there. Then I have some places for you to go that you can just simply search on Google. Um, oops, I also have um, the writer igniter, places that you can remove background off of images, ways that you can shorten URLs, some um, wheel of names, just some fun places that we can go there. So this is going to be a really nice um, area for you to be able to use that. Okay, so let's get going with that. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right into these. So the first one, I apologize, I have to take a little sip of water. The first one is classroom screen. And this one's probably gonna be the lengthiest one that I show you because there's so many different tools for this. And so when you sign up for this, you can sign up with your Google class, your Google um, email address, your Microsoft classroom um, address, or just a simple um, email address itself. So if you, de you know, depending on what your school environment is, it's going to work with any of those. So it's going to be nice to be able to use anything there. So I have a screenshot of of this, if I can bring that up real fast. So here you can see 
that when you create an account, you can use Google, Microsoft, or just simply your email address. So easy to set up and easy to, to get started. Now they do have some uh, paid subscriptions, but all I've used is the free and it's phenomenal. So let's go ahead and take a look at that now. So I'm going to go ahead and launch that. So this is it, this can be used if you're doing um, any type of remote um, classroom, but you can also project it in your classroom and be able to use it in your face to face classroom. So very, very versatile. Um, the very first thing that you would want to do is check out a background here so you can change the background to whatever your lesson is of the day. You can see that they have plenty of images here that they offer for, for you to use, or you can even upload your own backgrounds out of your own um, your own computer, whatever you have available. So you can select anything that you want. So I'll just do something fun. Let's let's do our little llama here. He's he's kind of cute. So whatever you want as your background, you can do that um, to start off with. Um, then you have a poll. So you can do any type of a poll. You can do multiple choice. You can do smileys. How are you feeling today? Um, you can do true, false. And then you can see right up here that the kids can use their own devices. They can log in and then they have a code that they will use and then they can respond. And so you can just you can just click on it. You can set up the question and then you can see that you can you can even change the coloring. You can do a lot of different things here. And so you can also look at the chart type that you want to display the results. So lots of different things here that you can do with this. You can do this for an entrance ticket. So if you want to first off, see how they're feeling that day. So if they're all grumpy and everything, you'll kind of get a head start and, and know what, what's happening there. You can do this as a, uh, a warm up to find out what do they remember from yesterday's um, lesson. So just kind of a preview again, just, you know, okay, yesterday we learned about this. What do you remember about what we said about this? Maybe it's an exit ticket. Ask them something about what they um, what they learned about today. So you can do this many different ways, things that they things that you can use in the classroom. So today's lesson, prior lesson, what is their mood, different things like that. Okay, next on the toolbar is a random name changer. So every single one of these always has a little gear that you can um, click on and find um, information that you can set up. And again, every single one of them has colors that you can adapt, you make it a, a different theme so that you can do that. This one is a name, a random name picker. So kind of like your popsicle sticks. So you can select, you can put your classroom names in and then you can let it pick the names for you. And so you can go in there and let them uh, let it pick the names for you. And so you can just create your list in here and save it. So you can edit the list. So if you know that somebody's absent that day, then you can edit your list right there and easily um, for that day, you can easily take off little Johnny's not here today. So you can easily take that off. Not a problem at all. And so this will take care of calling on students for you. Okay. So then you can also tell it to remember um, the students and then not call on the same students again if you wanted to do that. So you can take that off, off and on there. All right. You can even turn off the sounds if it gets annoying for you. So that's a name chooser. Then this one right here, this will create um, a, a QR code for you. So if you wanted them to go to a particular website, then you could generate um, a URL code and all of them, they could just simply use their devices and be able to go straight to a URL um, that you had chosen for them, or you could have a message for them. You could just simply type that in right there and it would generate a QR code. So I'm just gonna use our website. Um, the swrecnm.org website, I can generate that QR code, 
they take a picture of it with their devices and it takes them right to that website. So a, a QR code instantly um, displayed on your projected um, board. This next one is a noise meter. Now, this is really, really fun because if they're working in groups, then you expect a little bit of noise. But sometimes, you know, we don't want them to get too out of hand because we do have our um, neighbors and students next door that we don't want them to get too loud. And you can adjust the, the um, sound right here. So you can have pings, you can have um, gongs, you can have different things here. So you have sounds that you can adjust as well as the colors. And then depending on the noise level, you can determine how much noise is gonna be appropriate. And of course you can make it bigger so that everybody can see it. And so they're working in their groups. And if it gets too loud, then it's going to notify them by the sound that they've gotten a little too loud. So without you having without you having to constantly remind them to keep it down, you can have this being projected and let them know if it's getting a little too loud. Next, you can um, input an, a, a picture. So maybe you are working on an art project and you want to project an image of some sort. You can pull any image in here. So I'm just going to pull an image off of my computer and put it up here. And so you can pull any image and project it. And you can annotate on it in different things. So lots of things that you can do with images that you want to project. And this one is just a, a little whiteboard. That's really all it is. You're just going to type in a message. So you have everything, all the tools up here that you would use in Word. Um, you can change the color, you can change the font, you can do everything that you could in Word. And you, it's just it's just a little text message board up here that you that you can use. So again, you've got your little gear, so you can change the coloring. You can do lots of things up here, and so lots and lots of different things. So again, you've got your controls up here for formatting. You've got controls over here as well. You can even have spell check. If you're not sure of your spelling in front of, of the kids, you can go in here and turn on spell check. So just a little text message board here. Next up is just a draw. You can draw on this one. So you can have drawing, you can have, if you're doing math um, problems, you can do arrays. Uh, maybe you're doing angles, things like, like that. You can, you can erase things. You can do shapes. So you have different shapes that you can do. If you hold it, then it'll give you the, the formatting tools here. So you can, do, um, you can do solid, you can do dotted, you can change the color. Again, going along with whatever your theme is, you can do squares. So you have a lot of different options in here. Um, and then, like I said, if you are doing mathematical things, you can definitely do some things in here. You can change the thickness. So just again, holding it and you can um, do some different things. So here's the thickness line in here. So that'll change the thickness of the line. So lots of things in there for the drawing. This one, if they're working in groups, you can, um, pop this up on your projected image and let them know if it's a quiet time. Maybe they're taking quizzes. Oh, maybe they're allowed to just whisper in their groups so they can uh, just kind of keep it quiet. Or maybe time to that they can ask their neighbor a question if they're working you know, independently, but they can ask their neighbor something. That's fine. It's not a test or anything. Or they're working together. They're work, they are able to work in groups and that's what time it is. You can work together. So you could even um, have separate um, sections to where you can have group A and group B projected up here on your board and group A, you all are working together, but group B, it's time for you to work um, independently. So you can have them on both sides of your screen. Same idea with the 
um, stoplight. So right now everyone is working together and you know that it's going to be a group work. It's going to be a little noisy. So you do have your stoplight and you have different stoplights here. You can change it up a little bit here. And so if it's group work and it's green, everyone knows everything's good. But then if you turn it to yellow, then perhaps, you know, just let's keep it down to a little dull roar. Let's not get too um, crazy in here. So whispering to each other is fine. But then if maybe it is assessment time and we need to remember that there's no talking at this time. So you can have a stoplight to remind them of this. You also have a timer. And again, you have that capability of changing the coloring and things like that. Um, you have some different things that you can set up in here, different sounds for the timer. Whenever it goes off, there's a little cowbell in here or just a little guitar tune when it goes off. So you have different things there. So you can set that timer to, to run in the background. So you have timers in here. A clock. Sometimes you don't have a clock visible for all students, again, depending on how you have your classroom set up. So not all kids can see the clock. So maybe on your projected screen, you have a clock set up. And even a calendar. So sometimes you have some calendar activities. You can have a big calendar set up on, on your projector and you can you know, go forward and backwards in time so that you can have a calendar in view for, for your students. And dice, you can have some dice that are viewable. You can have one, two, or three dice. You can even have um, multi-sided dice. So you can see there's a lot of different things here that you can do. So you can do a lot of different things. So here we are. So five plus six. So you can do some different mathematical activities here. So I'm going to do two dice, dice up here and we're going to spin. It. So you can have some different math activities going on with your dice. And if you wanted to do some coding, so if you had something that you needed an embed code and see if it would run, you can do some um, coding in here and just put your code in there and then have it run the code, you could do that. You could also put, um, if it had an iframe, you could do that. I generally um, think of this as a video. So if I wanted to add a video in here, I could do that. So I'm going to pull a video code in here. So give me just a second to pull that. So give me one moment here real, real fast. I will pull one just a second here. So if I go in and pull a video, let's see. So if I were to get an embed code from this video, And I could put that right in here and then run that code. It is going to put that video right in there. So I could just pop that right onto my projected screen. This would take that list that you had earlier, all of your students, and it would create groups for you. So you can shuffle those groups around. And instead of you trying to create groups, it's just going to magically make those groups. And so you don't have the moaning and groaning of kids telling you, oh, miss, you just like them more and you're putting them all together because they're friends. <laughs> you can just actually do this and it will create those groups for you. And again, you can match your, your color schemes and do those different things in, in here with the settings. Just every single one of them has that little gear that you can, um, adjust and make, make it match your, your, your color scheme. Um, you can also do a stopwatch. So you had the timer over here and now you have a stopwatch that you can do as well. This one is a webcam. So it's probably not gonna do it because I'm on a Zoom <laughs> meeting right now. So, but you could probably switch it over to your document camera. You could switch it over to a webcam on your laptop or a, a 
regular webcam that you have mounted onto your screen. So you have lots of things that you could be doing with that as well. So that would um, allow you to do different things. So let's see if this would actually I'm going to try something. Yeah, there we go. So this is my laptop camera, whereas my Zoom meeting is doing my um, webcam that's mounted on a separate monitor. So you can have a document camera, like I said, have something else going on to where you can project that onto your onto your screen. So you can definitely take advantage of that. And the last one here, if you had a YouTube video or any other URL that you wanted to put in here for a video, then you could just take that website and um, put that in right there. So I'm going to go ahead and look for, see, look for another one. And I probably will just do that same thing that I did a moment ago. Let's see. Over here. Let's see where would be a good place to go. Well, I'm just going to go back where I was a minute ago. So give me just a second. I'm going to bring in, let's say I want this one right there. And I'm going to get that URL of that particular video. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to paste it right in here. And now, without having to go out to the web, I can play that video right here. And that way, I don't have a bunch of distractions with all of the different things on. Good afternoon and well. A, a lot of distractions on the side with advertisements and next video up and, you know, all of these different things that's going to distract um, from, from the video that I'm trying to share with them. And so that's um, just being able to put that right in to my projected image onto the board. So you can see that there are tons of things just in the free account for this class um, classroom screen. So that's a fantastic, fantastic thing. So if you wanted to purchase the additional things that that classroom screen has, then you can see that there are ways that you can upgrade this and be able to have more features if you so wanted to. Um, just with the free version, though, I mean, you have your name list that you can create, you have your backgrounds that you can have, all of them have their own little settings. But then if you wanted to upgrade uh, for your own account, you can see that you could have it for um, less than $30 a year, you could have all of this. And if you wanted a school account, um, you can adjust this and tell it how many licenses you wanted, how many um, teachers you have, and then it'll give you that um, number right there of how much it would run for those that number of licenses. But I find that the classroom, the free version has been phenomenal just because of all of the free features that it has. So I know that was a lot just for one, <laughs> one particular favorite feature, but that's a really great um, one is classroomscreen.com. So again, the next one is Flippity. And again, this one is a Google Google dream. So it's got so many different things that you could go into. And these all have a demo where you can go in and see what it's like and then the instructions on how to use it. And so you can see there's flashcards, there's quiz shows, there's a name picker here as well. Um, there's randomizer wheels. Uh, this one looks interesting. I haven't had a chance to play with this one yet. Uh, Flippity virtual breakout. So that one looks pretty interesting. A board game. Um, there's um, a bingo, a connect four game. There's manipulatives. There's even a typing test. Uh, lots and lots of things. Things to do with spelling words. There's um, word search, crossword puzzles, word scrambles. If you're a fan of Wordle, here is one where you can create your own Wordle style puzzles. And then certificates, uh, tournament brackets, uh, Mad Libs. Oh, I was a language arts teacher and Mad Libs was phenomenal for being able to help the kids really start 
understanding adverbs and verbs and nouns. They really got a lot better at those whenever they were playing Mad Libs. Um, there's some fun fonts in here. Word clouds, loved word clouds. So lots and lots and lots of things in here just on Flippity. So if you are a Google environment, I suggest you go in here and try a few of these because there's some really, really neat things that you can do um, using Google spreadsheets. All right, QR code monkey. This one is fun. So QR codes are really easy, an easy, easy way to share some information. And this is a way to make it super, super fun. So if you wanted to take a URL, and I am going to take our Tech Bytes um, site. So I'm going to go back to my Tech Bytes site right here. And I'm going to take that URL and copy it. And I'm going to put that right here. And again, this is all free. That's the fun part about this. I'm, I'm always into the, the freebies. But you can see across up here, you can do so many things. So just, you know, you can do text with this. You can do email, phone. I've seen people use this as like their contact card. And all of their contact information is uh, in, a, in a QR code. Um, you can set the colors that you want to use. So you can use just a single color. You can use color gradients. You can even um, choose the custom eye color. And that's these little guys right here. These little squares are called eyes. So I'm going to use color gradients. And I know the color codes that I want only because I, I do this a lot. So I know the color codes that I use for our logos. So I'm just going to go ahead and put these in. I know them. And then the eye color, I want like a yellowish golden color, like maybe right about a little more golden. There, I think I want that. So I want that color and maybe I already got that. Let's see. I'm just going to play with this one, a purplish. That's good enough, I think. And then the background color, the alt S is white. And so I, I usually leave the background white just so everything else stands out. Then you can add a, an image. And so I'm going to grab an image. I'm going to use our Tech Bytes crew here. And you, you can choose, you know, just like if it's YouTube or Instagram or anything like that, you can easily pull one of those as well. And you can even change the shape of your QR code. You could have any kind of an interesting shape if you wanted to. You could change the shape of the eye into one of these fun shapes. And the, even the center of it, the eyeball shape, it calls it. And you can change that. So, I mean, you can really get just crazy with this. Um, the default is going to be at 1,000 by 1,000 pixels, or you can even do high quality up here, 2,000 by 2,000. It really doesn't matter. So once you have all of that set, then you just say create QR code. And there you go. It has put your picture in the middle. It's done the coloring that you asked for. And now you can download it. And so it downloads it as a picture and you can put it in emails. You can put it on a poster. You can put it on a business card, whatever you want to do. So QR Code Monkey is really fun. Um, you can put it in you know newsletters if you're you have a classroom newsletter if you have an event coming up and maybe there's a form that you want parents to sign up um, some information you could put that qr code together and send that out so that's always just a fun way to do some things but yeah you just download it and it's ready to go so lots of fun with this and again it's free so lots of things you can do with qr code monkey if you like to jazz up your, your um, PowerPoints or slides, if you're Google, then the, here are some templates that you might want to use. So this one is 
um, slides gala. And so there's some different templates that you can use in this one. Also, there is slides carnival. Again, all of these are going to have the links in the PowerPoint that's already um, uploaded. And I'll show you how to get to that here in just a little bit. So here are some uh, templates that you can use in here. And Pretty much all of these are going to be PowerPoint and Google Slides, so you'll be able to access these with either program. Um, this one is Slides Go. Again, all of these are just some fun, different kind of um, templates that you can use just to make your PowerPoints a little a little more fun. Slides Mania, I really, really um, like. They have, not only do they have different things for your PowerPoint, but if you're a teacher, um, they have things for planners. So here's a planner. Um, and so not just a PowerPoint presentation, but things like planners and things are in here as well. So it makes it your, your productivity um, just on a personal level increase as well. Now, speaking of Slides Mania, they also have a section here where they have tips and tricks for things that you can use in Google Slides. And so they have ways that you can create digital stickers for using um, in different things. So icons may it's one of their little sister companies, and so they have ways that you can make digital stickers. So when you were looking at what I pointed out a moment ago with planners, you could have little stickers. You can have placeholders for images in your Google Slides. Um, lots of different things, how to record into Google Slides. And so it's just audio with your site words, how to embed a slideshow within a slideshow. So here's just some tips and tricks for Google Slides that Slides Mania offers as well. So they have a lot of different things in here as well. So you can see under education, they have so many different things. Um, morning meeting layout, certificates, uh, choice boards, manipulatives. They have so many things available in Slides Mania. They really kind of are the the leaders when it comes to uh, different things uh, for educators when in there. So that's kind of my go-to right there. Now, Jeopardy games, love, love playing games when it comes to reviewing. The kids seem to retain that information when you make it fun and make it a game. And so this Jeopardy Labs has some really, really cool ways to do this. And so you have links here where you can create a Jeopardy game and you don't even have to register. You can just go right in here and start uh, creating. And then if you don't feel like creating your own, they have tons and tons and tons of things that are already created. You just have to pick a grade level and a subject and they will list things that they already have. So they have some different things already in here. And so, um, take a look at this because there are tons of things in here. And then, like I said, you can make your own, depending on what unit you're working on, you can put your own together very, very easily. And so they've offered this for you. And so it's really, really nice. And again, I'm into free. And so this is really, really a great way to be able to do this. And kids love to be able to um, review in a fun and exciting way. Now, I told you that in I have this wiki that um, when I was working on my master's for educational technology, um, we had to do a lot of things and we just collaborated together and shared this with each other. And so on my wiki um, in my teacher's area, I do have some templates of uh, myself that have some pre-built things as well. Um, so here's a Jeopardy game with computer terms. Um, I also have a blank Jeopardy game in here and there's password games and different things. Here's a Jeopardy with shapes for the younger kiddos. So the littles like to get involved with this as well. So you have different kinds of Jeopardy. Here's Jeopardy for fractions and here's a fourth grade English Jeopardy game and Jeopardy science for fourth and fifth grade. So here's some different things in there. So I included that in here as well if you'd like to use those. Um, it was just something fun as we were getting our degrees. We just kind of shared the, the things that we had to build and we just shared those as well. So lots of different things in here. All right, then there's some things that you can just find on the Google search engine. And so if you will Google 10 value spinner, you will get an automatic spinner and you can change the number of 
things on the spinner just by you know down just clicking on this and it'll it'll switch it up for you and you can even um, have a fidget spinner so you know if you're just kind of stuck in a meeting you can you can even do something like this so you have a, a spinner of the year if you type in roll a die you can have dice that come up and you can roll them it'll add them up for you so you can do lots of different things here so just under roll a die okay if you type in flip a coin, here you are, heads and tails. Just some fun little things that you can do just very, very quickly. Another site is wheelofnames.com. So you just input your names over here and you can even put their pictures in here. You can add the, the student pictures. So don't know why these ads always show up. I wish they would not do that for teachers. <laughs> and then you just spin. And so it will choose somebody and the kids always love this because it will make noise and And so you can either close this and keep their name in the list or if that person has won a prize or something and you don't want them to keep winning prizes, you can remove them from the wheel and then it adjusts the wheel. And so you can shuffle them up and just keep shuffling and then spin it again. So that's always a fun, a fun thing for the kiddos. All right. And then they, like I said, they just get excited because it, it cheers them and it throws confetti and they just love that kind of stuff. All right. Well, again, I was a language arts teacher. So this next one is called Writer Igniter and it's just a fun, fun uh, writing prompt generator. And so you can shuffle it up a little bit and you tell them, okay, you're going to write today and you're going to have the character of a dog walker. And they their situation is that they accidentally steal something priceless. And the prop is a car hood ornament. And then here's their setting. It looks like a beautiful little patio with flowers and greenery and everything. So you just keep shuffling until you get something that you like. So you shuffle and you tell them, okay, here's what you're going to write about. And so, okay, they're going to write about a con artist who throws a temper tantrum on a spindle and here's their setting. So it's just a fun, fun um, writing prompt generator. So just kind of fun for them. So, all right. Now on that same idea, here is an image Oh, sorry, that's no, not on the same idea. That wasn't the link I was thinking of. Um, this particular site is really, really nice because as teachers, we like to um, have pictures and images and stuff that we like to put into our, our work. And so these are image websites that are um, free and clear for us to use. And so we don't want to take images and use them and then later on find out that we are violating copyright issues. And so these are all image websites that you can use um, without worrying about any violations. And so um, I included these because they are, it's nice to be able to do something like that and not have to worry about that. So these are all great sites to use for that. Anytime you see this little gray and black and white symbol, those are going to be um, sites that are um, shareable. You can, you can use these without any licensing concerns. So that's what you want to look for and know that you're safe. So um, Unsplash is a good one. So you can go in here and look for a picture. You can search for them right here and just know that they're going to be okay. So if you wanted to look for, oh, let's see, we, we had a llama earlier. Let's let's see if we can find another llama. So here's a good llama. So let's, let's oh, look, that one's kind of cool. So if we liked that one, we could download it. Um, we could even add some favorites and stuff in there. So it's just, just an easy way to... Um, find some images that we know are safe to use. Now, the reason that I wanted to bring up images is because the next favorite site is remove.bg. And what this is, is the site where you can bring in an image and remove the background. 
So sometimes you don't like the background, you want to use it for something else. So I just brought that image of the llama and I just copied it and brought it right in here and it took out the background for me. And now I can download it and I can use it however I want to. And what's nice about this is I can edit it, I can do some different things with it and be able to um, use it any way that I need to. Now I have another image that I was going to share with you. Uh, just to show you what some of this editing can do. So let me find that real fast. It's loading. And of course it's slow. Oh, got it. I can also show you right here that I can actually go in here and with the image that I had, you can, it'll share, it'll show you some of the backgrounds and different things. It'll give you some different um, ideas that you can do. Well, this crazy thing doesn't want to load my images that I was going to use. Of course, since I'm wanting to use something right away. <laughs> Let's see if I can find another image to use since it's not going to load for me. Let's see. Yeah. All right, I'm going to look at this image and I'm just going to copy it. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to paste it right in. Sure I am. <laughs> there we go, let's see. And sometimes you can um, get a URL off of an image on the internet and it will allow you to just put that right in instead of just a copy paste. Goodness gracious. It is not going to work with me, is it? Never fails whenever I'm trying to tell someone how easy something is. It's just gonna, gonna ag be aggravating. Okay, so I've copied that image in and I've told it to remove the background just you know, by copying it in. But you'll notice that right in here, it's kind of gotten some of the background out, but I really didn't want this to be removed. I just wanted the background over here. So I can go in on edit and I can choose erase or restore. And so sometimes it doesn't erase um, everything that I need it to, but sometimes it erases too much, like right here. So I'm going to restore, and I'm going to get my little brush size a little bit lower, and I'm going to tell it to restore the pieces in here that I wanted. I wanted those left alone. So I'm just going to kind of go back over this, And I want that restored. So it's going to just kind of put that piece back in. So now, now it's it's back to where I wanted it. So if I go back to background, now I can have that part is white again. And just the background has been taken out. And now I can download it. And so I have my image just like I wanted. And I can download it. So again, all that is free. So that's always nice. And so, okay, my nice my little program over here that I had there is where I was trying to do. Okay, I'm going to need that guy in just a second. So, okay, so there's where it was. And then I was able to edit it and bring back the white right in there by restoring it. And again, all free. You can sign up for an account, but really the, the parts that I use, I've used it for years and I just use the free version. All right. Next is going to be URL shortening. And so there's Bitly that I'm going to share with you. And, and they have accounts and everything, but I really just use the free versions. And so sometimes, especially if you're going to be sharing some information with someone, or maybe on um, if you do a lot on Twitter and you are limited on the characters, if you're trying to put something in and it's this giant 
um, URL, then of course you're going to run out of space or just trying to share something with someone and you can't repeat it because it's, you know, number symbol, lowercase, low, you know, uppercase, lowercase. You can't even repeat it because it's so, so, you know, just crazy, crazy. So if I had a link that I wanted to share, such as um, the PDF of my PowerPoint that I was working off of just a little while ago, this is what it would look like. And if I can get it to work here, let me see. Okay, so here is my URL for that PDF. And I wanted to share it out of my OneDrive. I'm going to copy that. And if I put it in here, I wouldn't be able to re to memorize that to be able to give it to somebody. And then if I click on shorten, Bitly has made it very, very easy if I wanted to tell it to somebody or just email it or share with somebody. Now it's a lot easier to share with someone because it's just a nice short so here it is right there from this, and it even went on and on and on to this. So now I can just copy it and use it and give it to somebody um, to, to use. So nice to be able to shorten that up. Now let's do the same thing with tiny URL. Same idea that you, you take a nice long URL. So here's my long one. But this one, I can actually choose what the ending is going to be. So maybe I want my ending to be tinyurl.com slash babes. And there it is. So now I have tinyurl.com slash techbytesphase. I could just tell somebody if you want the PowerPoint link for all of these websites that we just did today, then just go to tinyurl.com slash techbytesphase and they would have that access. So instead of trying to give them this crazy thing, that's what I could give them instead. So that's much, much easier than this crazy thing. So a lot of these, again, this is a free account. So it's nice to be able to have free accounts, but you'll notice I didn't even sign in for that. They, I just put it in. Uh, the nice thing about when you do sign in is that it will remember them for you and that you don't have to worry about putting them somewhere else because it's going to remember that forever and ever um, if you were to try to get that um, URL again try to put that in, it would tell you that that's taken already. So a lot of times you're trying to come up with a URL and it's like, nope, that one's taken, that one's taken, that one's taken. But if you create an account, and again, it's free for tiny URL, it is free, um, but it, you would you would have to write it down somewhere else if you didn't create an account. So lots of fun, uh, fun accounts here that are some of my favorites. I hope that um, maybe there's going to be some of your favorites too. So um, let's see if I can bring up, I do want to share with you, um, uh, like I said, this is our last Tech Bytes for this school year, but we're going to be back again next school year. And hopefully you're going to let me know some of the things that you'd like for us to help you understand. Maybe there's some new um, ed te educational technology that you're hearing about that you'd like for us to teach you how to use. We kind of pride ourselves that we're not really professional at this, but we're just your teacher down the hall that you come to and ask for some help. Tell me how to do this. I want to learn how to do this. That's what we're here for. Our lunch and learns that we have at noon, um, those are just anywhere from 10 minutes to 30 minutes. And it's just short and sweet, quick little things on how to do this. Today's was on merging cells in Excel. So it's just real quick. How do I do this? And so tell us what you want us to help you with. And we'll be glad to, um, if we don't know how to do it ourselves, we'll find out how to do it. And we'll be glad to put it together and help you learn how to do some of these things. We want to make technology easy for you to use, whether it's making you more productive as a teacher or an administrator, some kind of an educator. Um, we want to make it 
life more productive for you. And we also want it to become easier for you so that you feel more comfortable bringing it into your classroom instruction, being able to try new things and having the kids be able to use technology in the classroom as well. So um, you can find us at, at swrecnm.org. And then right along the top, you have our Tech Bytes link here. And you also, normally this rotates, but I've paused it. Um, we do have a Tech Bytes picture right here that you can click on as well. When you click on it, it's going to go to this page, our Tech Bytes page, and it will show you the different things that are coming up. And you can register for the different classes. And then you have different links right here that I'm going to show you each of those as well. And so on the upcoming Tech Bytes schedule, it's going to look a little sad because we've come to the end of our semester, the end of our school year. But normally this is all of different sessions that we're offering. So on the left, you have our sessions that we offer. And on the right, all of the different RECs in New Mexico that are participating, you'll have all of the different things that they are offering. And we still have some things to do um, all the way through next week. Uh, different RECs are still going to have some presentations. You can still register and have some fabulous things that you can learn. So here are those things that are being offered. And then the next link that was on our Tech Bytes site was the different agenda and schedule of upcoming sessions. And usually it's just full of things because it would be up until the end of the year, but we're now at the end of the year. So here's more information on those last few things that we're offering and registration links again. We also have the archive. Everything we've done this year is available here. You can see, PowerPoints, notes, anything that was available to you, and even the recorded sessions. And so if, um, if they have a YouTube channel, it's going to be on their YouTube channel. If they have it on their website, this is going to link to the website. Wherever they house their recordings, it's going to be there. So everything we've done this year, um, all of us here in New Mexico, it's going to be in here. And so that's going to be under the archive um, schedule. So you'll see everyone has their information in here. Um, the RECA is the association that oversees all of the RECs here in New Mexico. So if you go to their website and then across the top here under resources, there is the TechBits video gallery. And so most of them call it call it Tech Bits, but I had already named ours Tech Bytes. And so I just kind of jokingly say we have Tech Bytes and Bits. And so um, this is the page that I'm on right now is the video gallery. And so on here, you are going to have all of the videos that we have all made throughout this school year, but they're categorized for you by subject. And so if you have something under Google Suite that you would like to look at, you can just Click on this little drop down arrow and all of those videos are going to be under there. Um, same thing. Here's Microsoft Excel videos. And so all of the different videos that had to do with Excel are going to be in here. And so there they are. They're loading slowly but surely. <laughs> Um, today's video, when it gets uploaded, will be under miscellaneous. So most of the ed educational technology falls under miscellaneous videos because there's not really a category there for them. So you'll see all these different things that we have covered this year, all the different things. There's Canva for educators. There's Nearpod, both beginners and advanced. Um, Quizzical and Quizlet. Uh, let's see, there was... Um, Quizzes and Quizlet. There's cyber hygiene, keeping um, cyber secure. There's password, um, keeping your password safe. There's ways to do screenshots. There's so many different ways to do screenshots. I bet you didn't know that. Um, Wakelet, um, Edpuzzle, Kahoot, oh, it's just so many different things that, um, that we have all covered uh, this year. So you can find all of those different videos categorized right in here. And then the YouTube channels. So 
we have our own YouTube channel right here, Tech Bytes of Southwest REC. So all of our videos from this year are right here in our YouTube channel. And so again, that link is going to be in our Tech Bytes um, page. And then RECA does it just a little bit different. What we do here is each of the RECs that are participating, um, we have a playlist for each of the RECs. And so all of the videos that they have made this year will have its own playlist. And so if you know that REC1 in the northwest corner of, of New Mexico, you want to see what they've put together, then you can go straight to their playlist. So you'll see their playlists are um, right here in the RECA YouTube channel. So again, all of those links, that's what I was just showing you right up here. Instead of clicking on them, it takes a while to load. So I just did that ahead of time. So I hope that you have enjoyed um, our Tech Bytes and Lunch and Learns this year. And hopefully you've had a chance to even look at some of the other REC presentations because we've got some, some talent in our RECs. We're all educators as well. No, I, I shouldn't say all educators because we have some that came to us that weren't educators, but they are working in our educator world. And so I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope that you'll reach out to us. Let us know what you would like to see us present next year because we'll start working on our schedule for next year. And we'd like to help you out. Let us know what you need some help with, and we would be glad to show you um, how to work with anything that you need some help with. So thanks for joining us. We hope to see you again next school year. Thank you, and goodbye.